Why do people hate the GNOME desktop environment so much? We'll discuss that today on Jeremy's Tech Channel. Wow, I am um, <laughs> taking a look at some things uh, with the GNOME desktop environment, trying to get a grasp of it. Because if you've watched some of my previous videos, you know that I've been looking at and researching Linux phones. And, you know, I came across something called Pure OS and they were talking about a convergent desktop environment. And it really, it was just GNOME that they would squeeze in on a phone and GNOME that they would pull out and use on a desktop. Uh, I know it's a little more complicated than that, but in its general sense, that's all it was. And I was like, okay, cool. That seems to be an interesting way to use a desktop environment and have it be converged between something small and something big and to be able to, wherever you're at, to have that and that GNOME can handle that. That's pretty cool. All right. So, you know, and I've also noticed Fedora, just something we're going to take a look at a little bit today, is seems to be centered around GNOME. There are some other additions that you can use without this desktop environment. But I start reading and I start trying to get a grasp of what GNOME can do, what features it has. And I just keep coming across all of these people that are just spitting venom. I mean, like, they are not okay <laughs> with this desktop environment. And I just have been digging and digging into these pages and pages of forum posts and articles on media sites for Linux. And I'm just like, what is going on? And, and I'm gathering there's a couple things that are making people feel unheard or uh, they keep changing and messing with my stuff, man. <laughs> what we've seen, and there's a pattern that uh, seems to happen regularly. GNOME 2 changes to GNOME 3. And people love GNOME 2. They get comfortable, they get warm and cozy. They have you know, applications that are ready to go within the GNOME desktop environment. GNOME 3 comes out and they're like, uh, uh I ain't dealing with it. We're just gonna fork off and keep moving with this. And Mate desktop is, is, is born. GNOME 3, they're moving into the GNOME 40 situation. Cinnamon desktop is born because they don't wanna deal with everything that's happening there. Then you start hearing about other distributions deciding to move away GNOME that have been using GNOME for years. Pop! OS is an example. They decided they were going to build things from the ground up, programming with the Rust programming language, do their own thing. Uh, I think Solaris is another one that has decided to move away from GNOME. And I'm just like, what is going on? It's like every major release, every move that GNOME makes, somebody get upset. <laughs> You know, I'm like, why is this so hard? Now, I am not coming from a programmer uh, or a developer side of things. And I read, let me pull this up real quick because I found this interesting. Where are you? I have multiple places pulled up because I've been researching this, trying to understand what people, why people are upset. Uh, I'm reading this here. Uh, for the migration to GTK4 and Libidwaita, to happen in settings, developers had to heavily modify around 330 source code files, including dependencies of dependencies. For reference, uh, the number of dependencies LXQT 1.0.0 control panel has 50 dependencies and XFCE 4.16 is 80. Now those are lightweight desktop environments that, you know, they don't have the same goal in mind per se as GNOME, but I found that interesting that there's just a lot of code that gets changed when they're working through and advancing this desktop environment. I read a Twitter post, someone had decided to install GNOME on their vanilla Arch install. They went through the whole Arch installation process, uh, the traditional command line way it went through, did the, the you know 40 to hour long process, and they decided on the GNOME desktop environment, and this person <laughs> got raped for it. I'm like, why? Why? Well, I'll tell you why. They break my stuff. <laughs> and there's some truth to that, right? You know, you go through and a GNOME update happens, and now all those extensions that you had set aren't working anymore. And that's frustrating for people, right? You know, one of the things that I find frustrating 
is that you have to essentially use all of these extensions to get it the way that you want it to do. In one sense, that's cool, right? You can use these extensions to tweak things and you have GNOME tweaks and you can also get the web plugin and access that GNOME extensions browser and install extensions that way. In one sense, that's cool. In other ways, it's kind of messy. And that's probably why GNOME's like, well, sorry, when they update something. Uh, I'm going to switch over to Fedora. I've been taking a look at Fedora. It's a cool distro. Seems to be everyone that I am reading. They, they're definitely test driving this for a lot of good reasons, right? I want to take a look at Fedora Silverblue, which is a different project. It's intended to try to become an immutable operating system. And that's cool. With GNOME, I see some things that are frustrating people. You know, this is a 41.5, this isn't 42 yet. And the experience itself is quite fine to me personally. I don't have a problem. You know, it is laid out a little different. And here's your GNOME tweaks that you can install and make those GNOME tweaks. <laughs> tweaks advanced GNOME 3 settings. Okay, as so we're talking about 41.5. But you know, little, little tweaks in here of what is available through using a super key and finding what you're looking for, finding those applications, those application specific things, you know, what it's providing for you is actually great, right? And then the GNOME development team does something like, you know, they come out with a new Libadwaita or Advaita, however you're supposed to say it, forgive me, where you can choose your light and dark theme and it really can only go through there. And people are like, why? Why, why am I being sandboxed? And that's one of the things that I think people are getting frustrated with is I am supposed to be able to have the freedom, freedom, and I'm not getting it. Now, obviously the source code is available for you because it's an open source project for you to go and make the adjustments that you want and need. With a full feature desktop environment, I'm sure that's a lot of work. Is it worth it? Probably not for most people. I definitely would be spinning my wheels for sure. They have built a pretty robust system. And I think the GNOME developers should be lauded for doing a couple things. Once again, I've come from a Mac background and there are some things I'm seeing. Obviously I got frustrated enough and moved out of the Mac environment, except for at work where I'm still using Macs daily. But in my home situation, I have moved away. And one of the things that was so frustrating to me was you know, if you do any kind of photography or video work, the there for a while, FireWire was it, man. FireWire was such a cool protocol um, and port to use. Mac said, and hey, we're done with that. You know, and there are some things they're seeing. They're, they're moving towards something. I understand that. Also, uh, some other things is you don't need that DVD drive. You, it, we've moved on. You want to be in dongle hell? <laughs> use USB-Cs. You know, those kinds of things happen and they're moving some things forward, it's frustrating as a user. I have all of this extra stuff invested and you changed it on me. You know, truth of the matter is, this is GNOME's desktop environment. They can do it however they want. And just like Mate forked off from GNOME 2 and Cinnamon forked off of GNOME 3, there probably, you know, will be forks from all of this because for some reason, people love it. There's something that, that GNOME is doing right. And I think that's why there's so much venom, right? There's so many things that are done right. Going back to the phone and the desktop environment that something could be scalable and usable is great. If I go to this menu here, I am on a phone. This menu setup is actually pretty straightforward and usable for a phone. I can use this on my desktop. If you don't like a bunch of things on your desktop, not much there. You know, you've got your dash to dock extension there. It's very minimal in that sense. And I think that's good. A lot of the applications that GNOME puts out are great, really cool, really well thought out. And they keep on trying to make things simple. I, I read a critique of GNOME that is trying to be more mobile, uh, more for mobile. And I actually agree with them, but I don't think that's a critique. I think that's something that it is going to be good and benefit us in the long run. GNOME has its place. It keeps moving things forward in my mind. I think it keeps moving things forward. Adoption of Wayland is a frustrating thing and is breaking some things for some people. Uh, the adoption of Pipewire and all those kinds of things. But Wayland specifically for GNOME is something that might become frustrating for someone trying to run something and now Wayland breaks because it's 
It's not necessarily new, but it's just now becoming something that people are using. I think the GNOME team is doing what they feel like they need to do, and we need to learn to be okay with that. We also need to be okay with people who decide they want to use it at its current state. We also need to be okay that people are a little frustrated and burned because every update, things get broken. I would get tired of that. I don't use GNOME, and I don't use GNOME for that specific reason. It seems to be every fairly major update, a bunch of things get broken. I can see that being frustrating and being the only reason that you would choose not to use GNOME. In the Mac world, I have seen how Apple has done some things that has helped move the computing world forward, and specifically with desktop and specifically with home users that we wouldn't have if it wasn't for them just pushing some things forward. And so I'm going to see where GNOME moves us. I'm gonna see where it moves us. Am I gonna use it as my daily driver? At this point, no. Like I mentioned, I don't want my desktop breaking every major release. If I've tweaked some things to my liking, I can see that being very frustrating. However, if this convergent model with for it to be able to work on a phone as well as it can on a desktop. And KDE is working on some things like that too. Um, I know Plasma is working towards that as well. So either one would be fine with me, but I would be willing if those pieces are worked out. You know, the vanilla GNOME experience is actually quite nice. It is a different navigation. It is a different way to get through it. Let's stop the hate. Let's accept it for what it is. If you don't like your system breaking every time you get used to using something, maybe you shouldn't use GNOME. If we want things to move forward, we have to let developers like the GNOME team be able to do their thing and to observe and glean and to allow that to happen. It's their project, right? I know there are other companies and distributions that have input in this, and that's also muddied the waters, really made some things more difficult, probably messed with GNOME's vision in the first place. I think we need to be very understanding. And if someone wants to use GNOME, let them use GNOME. Don't just go, Bleh. even if you're feeling it inside. Just let it be. Let them be. Let them go through and when it breaks and they decide to move to something else, then you can go, hey, here's another desktop environment you should check out. Or hey, are you ready for window managers? Just let people go through that. Because as long as people are using GNOME, things get moved forward. As more people are using all of these pieces that Linux has, the more we move forward. We can we can have GNOME users on Arch. We can have XFCE users. We can have window manager users. We can have people that strictly just use the terminal. We can do that. We are a community that will allow it. So let's allow it. I hope you enjoyed my random rant today. I'll see you later.